Well, first of all, obviously very excited about my first training camp as a head coach. And uh, it's going to be awesome opportunity for uh, me to live my dream and hopefully do everything I can to help our team live theirs. And um, so first and foremost, I certainly am excited about that and grateful for all the people that have given me that opportunity. Uh, next thing I would say is that our team is in a, a very good place right now. They're very healthy. Uh, I expect to have 118 players uh, the first day of training camp, and I expect them to be pretty close to almost all of them participating, give and take a couple here or there, uh, which is really uh, based upon how well they trained in June and July to allow that to happen. Uh, our strength and conditioning coach has done an amazing job, Tyler Owens and his staff, and then our, our training staff has done a great job of getting them uh, ready to go. So excited about our players being ready, being healthy. Uh, as everybody knows, we will be having uh, what I hope to be as close to an NFL experience in a college town as possible. Uh, we will be having six training camp practices that will be surrounded by a fan fest experience. Uh, the experience will be right out here behind our practice field. Uh, and there should be everything from jump houses to opportunities to throw footballs to 40 yard dash to face painting to caricatures and everything in between. Uh, our goal is to get the entire Tucson community to come out and uh, embrace uh, the experience like they do on NFL camps. We'll have radio there. Uh, we'll have uh, DJ there, we'll have music, and obviously it's free, and then practice is wide open after that. If it's a morning practice, we'll have our players sign autographs afterwards uh, by position group. I'll put that out on my social media on who's going when. If it's an evening practice, uh, we will not stay after to sign autographs. Uh, and we hope we get as many people as we can. Uh, I don't see why it would be very different from an NFL town when you can pack in thousands to watch a practice for training camp. Uh, these will be our final set of practices that are open for the um, season. So training camp will have all of the practices open through August 21st. And then after that, we'll start uh, closing them down uh, to the public when we start game planning. And then finally, I would just say that uh, we're healthy in regards to COVID. Um, we are extremely high vaccination rate. I believe we're at 115 out of 118. Uh, so it's uh, pretty cool that that's where our team is and every member of our staff. So to be able to have that, we're very proud of that. That gives us a competitive advantage in my mind uh, as we should not miss any time as a football team due to COVID. Um, obviously, if somebody tests positive uh, on a breakthrough, then the rest of the team does not have to quarantine because they're vaccinated. And that's a huge part of it. Uh, so we're excited. Our team is ready to go. Our team is healthy. Uh, well, I think we have nine or 10 offensive players and nine or 10 defensive players coming to talk to all of you. We have all of our coaches available for you to talk to. And uh, then what we will do is set it up just like we did in the spring. You'll get a position group and coach assigned at the end of every practice. And then I'll talk to you guys every other practice. Um, okay, so we'll take it uh, to questions and excited to uh, see all of you back uh, in person. What's, uh, what's the first order of practice, the first week of practice? What's that going to be like? What are you trying to achieve? Well, we're going to start with fundamentals. Uh, it's really important for us to be great at the fundamentals. Uh, we understand as a coaching staff that if we can't win that part of it, we won't win much. So um, we're going to spend a significant time on the field. Uh, we'll be practicing pretty long and uh, be focusing extensively on fundamentals early and then work our way through till we start getting to the more physical practices. Um, we'll be in helmets the first two days, shoulder pads uh, the next three. We understand it's about mental and physical toughness, and we have to establish that. Uh, especially if we're going to run the football the way we want to run the football. We want to play from under center, um, the way Don Brown plays defense. We want to be smart about being physical, 
Uh, we want to know how to stop at the whistle, but uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna tackle. We're gonna wear full pads um, as many days as they allow us to wear full pads, and uh, we'll wear shoulder pads as many days as they allow us to wear shoulder pads. So um, I'm not expecting to shy away uh, from a very tough camp. We expect to be on the practice field a long time every day. So be ready as you're planning your days. And um, hopefully we can get ourselves to a spot where we can build some calluses. And um, if we can do that, then we got a chance. Yeah, they, you know, they each are unique. Um, with Jordan, who's new to the room, uh, he's, he really has a, a nice, quiet confidence about himself. I, I think at probably the l more he's around us, the more comfortable he is with his teammates. Um, I've never seen him throw a football yet, so I know they have, but I haven't. So I'll be interested to see what he brings. Gunner, we all know Gunner. Gunner is um, very confident, um, exudes it is boisterous, has a huge smile all the time, really enjoyed being around him. Uh, he's very contagious energy. And uh, Will, Will is pretty serious. Um, he's very willing. He has incredible work ethic. And um, he comes to play every day. And uh, right when you watch a practice and feel that one guy might have had a better day, the very next day, um, that next person steps up. So we got to figure out pretty quickly who's going to be our guy, and then uh, start getting him those reps. How have you been able to change the conversation from 7 to 7 and 12 games to 3 to all this optimism that's surrounding the program? Right yeah, well, I like to say I wasn't here for what it was, so I don't try to spend a lot of time really harping on the past. There's a lot of things that go into the past, um, a lot of things that go into what's occurred. Uh, and I don't know a lot of the details, and I don't know exactly um, what the what went into the results. I do know that, you know, leading into week week one or probably going into week two, everybody felt pretty good about the team. Um, you know, a three-point game going to the very end against USC, um, team that went on and won the Pac-12. I'm sure they felt pretty good that it was a good football team. As things started, you know going away or deteriorating and injuries and COVID and everything else, things got away from them. But we remind our team that we need to start winning, that talking season has come to an end today, and now it's time to start putting up and doing a good job of putting up um, a good fight. We have 17 transfers that have joined our program. We have 16 high school kids that have joined our program. We have, I believe, seven, six or seven players that opted out last year season that are returned to our season to our team so there's probably about let's call it 35 to 40 percent of our players that weren't even a part of um, the game against the team up north last year and nor were a part of um, the losing streak but um, and that's the same that goes for our staff so we we kind of all are coming in fresh coming in optimistic and we also know that um all signs are pointing to people believing in our program. Recruiting signs, um, donations. We've been able to do close to $6 million of renovations in our football facility based on privately funded donations uh, since I've arrived. So all of that optimism, I think, gives kids a chance to, and belief. Are you the type of coach who, as soon as you feel like you have a number one quarterback, you're gonna name him? Or are you just going to wait probably to the day before or even the time of the first Yeah, I'm not. Uh, when we know who our starter is, you'll know who our starter is. Uh, there'll be, there won't be uh, – I'm not really into the gamesmanship, to be quite honest. I, I like to – you know, I, I think the more gamesmanship you have, the more your team thinks that you're playing games with them. And uh, I'm much more into open, honest communication and – uh, when we know who our starter is, they'll know who our starter is, and then you guys will know. Um, we'll just do it in that order. Um, I'm really excited about, uh, I mean, the, the canned answer would be all the position group battles. And um, there will be some good ones at running back. Uh, there'll be a good battle that will take place at the running back position, which is a unique one similar to quarterback, where there's only one that will be in on the field at a time. Um, the other battles I would say keep an eye on is the safety battle. 
Uh, we had a lot of guys that are competing to start at safety. Right now, I would say there's probably four or five um, that, that believe they could compete and start there. And um, probably our linebackers and pass rushers. So it'll be a pretty good all the way through. I think we have a pretty good idea who's going to be our starting three receivers. Um, give and take. Uh, we'll compete a little bit, make you see where Jamari's health is. And, um, and then I would say other than that, we kind of have a good idea. I would say that the first thing I would tell them is that uh, no one's ever drowned in their own sweat. So uh, camp is going to be hard. Camp is going to be tough. And uh, we're going to do everything we can to create an environment of competition. Uh, all of our values and all of our standards uh, and all of our messages hasn't changed. Um, you know, daily we talk about it being personal. We talk about our five values um, as a program to raise up with respect, accountability, innovation, selflessness, and enthusiasm. And um, we tell our players that competition is the central theme of our program. Those things will never change. That will be our message. Um, we have a uh, special guest speaker that will talk to our team tomorrow evening to kick off training camp, who has won a Super Bowl as a head football coach. And um, he's gonna address the team in the same manner that he addressed his football team for uh, nine straight years as a head coach. And um, took over a team that was, I think, five and 11. Um, went to the Super Bowl two years later. Took a, seven years after that, we were 5-11 again and went 13-3 and the next year and went to the uh, loss in the AFC playoff game against the Colts who won the Super Bowl. So uh, we're going to find a way to um, continue to build our message, build our brand of becoming a pro and recognizing what it's going to take to get there. And we know it's not going to be easy. Uh, my plan for the Zona Zoo is to do everything I'm humanly allowed to do to make it the greatest um, experience uh, for our students. Um, whether that be giveaways, whether that be um, we're hiring a DJ from out of town to come in and uh, make it the coolest experience, whether it be improving the light show, whether it be um, making it more of a party atmosphere, all of it, like all of it. I mean, we have what, 50,000, 60,000 students here. I mean, all we need is 10,000 of them, and we could sell it out of the Zona Zoo. So I would love for people to be uh, standing on top of one another, having the best possible time they could possibly have. And if we can make the Zona Zoo the best party in the country, then I don't have to read that ESPN College Game Day doesn't have us in the top five. Um, I saw today we were not in the top five of college towns. That was devastating to me for ESPN College Football. Um, I saw they ranked the Grove number one. So I don't know if it's the mall. I don't know if it's the desert. I don't know what we want to call it, but I think we need to make this environment here in Tucson the absolute best football environment in the country. And there's no doubt in my mind we can do it.